Hello everyone, happy Wednesday, and welcome to episode 3 of what I'm calling the Bizarre and Odd Week here at Quandries and Sundries. Today I thought I would cover weird natural disasters and weather events in history. And don't worry, I will not be talking about any deaths related to each event. I'm just going to be going over the events and talk about the science around it and talk about its impact at large. So with that out of the way, let's get started, and I hope you enjoy. Let's talk about molasses. Yes, the refined sugary liquid that you find in your maple syrup. Now I hear you saying, what do natural disasters and molasses have in common? It is one of the oddest disasters I have ever heard about in history. Today we are talking about the Great Molasses Flood of 1919. Boston, Massachusetts, January 15th, 1919. It was a cold, frigid morning, and at the time, molasses was a key to the city's livelihood because the nearby distillery would turn molasses into not just syrup, but also ethanol for cars, alcohol, and for munitions. And, in World, and since World War II had ended the previous November, they were crucial to the war effort. The distillery had a huge tank, 50 feet or 15 meters tall and a diameter of 90 feet or 27 meters and it could hold 2.3 million gallons or 8.7 million liters that's about four olympic sized swimming pools and that's as tall as five as a five-story building the thought of it is terrifying because i'm actually looking outside of a five-story window right about now the tank had always been a problem because it was not, not designed properly and would always creak and moan at night, scaring residents. And on January 15th, in the middle of the night, people heard a large bang as the bolts and rivets of the poorly designed tank burst out. The pressure of the molasses made the rivets sound like machine guns because they were going off that fast. They were actually firing off like bullets. This all resulted in a wave of molasses moving through the city 25 feet high, or 8 meters high, and at a speed of 35 miles per hour, or 56 kilometers per hour. Half of the city was covered with molasses up to 3 feet or 90 centimeters deep at some points. The flood didn't last long, but the cleanup took months with fireboats cleaning the streets with salt water and sand turning the bay brown for months. It took weeks to clean up, as it had leveled many buildings and even ruined the subways. One reporter at the time said that everything he touched and everything he stepped in was just sticky. It resulted in million dollars, millions of dollars worth of damage, and also resulted in one of the first class action lawsuits in Massachusetts history and helped pave the way for regulations and responsibility for various companies and making them at fault for anything like this in the future. I never thought in my life I would say the words, molasses could be dangerous. I, get to, I guess too much of a good thing is really a bad thing. Now before we get back into your regularly scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content, and if you're listening on YouTube, i really appreciate it if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify or the audio platform of your choice, consider following. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's get right into the final story. Finally, let's hit up Siberia for an event in Russian history that has always fascinated me, the Tenguska event. One of the biggest meteor events to hit the Earth in the last 150 years, I'd say even in the last 1,000 years. On the morning of June 30th, 1908, in the middle of the Siberian wilderness, the world was rocked by an explosion of immense magnitude. It may have been 330 feet or 100 meters across, but compared to the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, 
which was 6.2 miles, or 10 kilometers across, it was small, but still the largest asteroid to ever hit the planet in the last 1,000 years. But what's interesting in the case of the Tunguska event is that it never actually made contact with Earth. It broke up in the atmosphere, and it is estimated that the actual size in space was closer to between 160 to 6... 20 feet or 50 to 190 meters what happened instead was that it exploded in the atmosphere at about the height of a regular commercial jet nevertheless after burning up 50 percent of its mass in the atmosphere it still re registered as a five magnitude earthquake and was 1,000 times more powerful than an atomic bomb destroying 80 million trees and an area the size of Hong Kong it is only one of two meteors we have recorded that exploded before entering our atmosphere and not even hitting the ground. The second was the Chelyabinsk impact that also happened in Russia, but in 2013, with a meteor a fifth the size of the Tunguska meteor. And compared to the one in 1908, videos of, videos of this meteor went viral. I remember seeing them all over in the news in high school. The Tunguska event is a monument to the raw power of nature, and I'm so glad it hit in the middle of nowhere. And I'm also glad that it was not any bigger, and any planet-destroying asteroids have not hit us. Fun fact, if you want to pray that we don't get hit by a giant asteroid, thank Jupiter. It has been using its gravity to keep 80% of the asteroids in our solar system and any extraterrestrial asteroids at bay for the last few million years. So, so Jupiter, from the bottom of my heart, thank you that I'm alive. Well, that is all I got for today. I hope you all enjoyed the change, and I hope you all look forward to what the rest of the week has to offer. Before I go, I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode, and I would also love to ask for all your help in letting me know how I'm doing and how I can improve this show. After all, this is your show and I do it all for you. So head over to my social media or just the comments and let me know. Thanks so much and do not forget to share this to anyone in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you all join me again tomorrow for the final episode of Bizarre Week here at Quandries and Sundries. This is Van Masterson, signing off.